contrary believed that one of the big lies of education is that it is neutral. If I teach an ESL, EFL student the names of the fruit, and I teach them numbers and money, but I do not teach them when and how to negotiate for discounts, then I have made a value judgment that they only need to know the very basics. For whatever reason, I have de decided that they do not need to know how to get better prices for themselves. That's a very simple example that I hope gets the point across. However, if you find that you want to argue with me about why they should only be taught the basics, then good. Disagreement, controversy, debate all lead to critical thinking, meaning deeper thinking and understanding. I don't need my students to agree with me on everything but I do need them to deeply consider the reasons for what they do or do not teach. Often the omission of what we teach is just as important as what we teach. When I taught the short story Mother Tongue by Amy Tan in my advanced reading class, I realized that I was as guilty as Amy Tan's old teachers. True, I had never told any of my ESL students that they couldn't be writers but I had never actively told them that they could. I think deep down, I had doubts about how an immigrant ESL student could become a professional writer for a newspaper or for, or for novels. Since then, I have tried to encourage my students and let them know that a writing profession is also an option for them. Take a look at the chart of US core culture on page 173 of the textbook. Use that chart as a starting point for evaluating your own country's values. Which are the values, which of the values are the same in your country and which are different? Can you put the differences into words? A little internet research might help you discover what researchers consider to be the core values in your country. Once you understand the core values of your country, the, cult the textbook suggests recognizing what subcultures you're a member of. The handout on page 225 walks you and your students through a series of questions to bring to the conscious level your subculture memberships, such as religion, gender, social class, education level, ethnicity, and other groups you are involved with. Self-evaluation for yourself and for your students is an important step in critical pedagogy. I suggest you prepare for the possible controversies that may occur between individuals in your class by teaching basic vocabulary for politely disagreeing. Make sure that everyone understands that differences of opinions are okay and should be expected. Try to give all your students a voice. That means a chance to speak what they think. Create respect for diversity and ethnic differences. And I can't tell you how many mistakes I have made along those lines. The important part, in my mind, is just keep trying.